In this video, I want to take a look at using Lightroom's new range masking feature to help us make accurate selections of objects in our photographs in Adobe Lightroom. Now, Lightroom introduced this feature with the latest Lightroom Classic update, and it's a really nice tool for helping us make really accurate selections around certain objects. If you've been using Lightroom for any length of time, I think you'll run into the same thing I did, where it's just very limiting with what the paintbrush tool, even with the auto masking option turned on, it's very limiting what that tool can do. And range masking really helps step up the bar for what the adjustments are that you can do in Lightroom. So let's go ahead and dive in. Here I've got an image of my wife, Sarah, and she is wearing a very blue hat here. Now what I wanna do is I wanna mess around with just this hat and not the rest of the photograph. Now, could we do this with HSL? Yeah, but that would mess with her jacket a little bit. We really need a local adjustment of just this hat. So what I'm gonna do is use range masking to do that. So let me zoom out here to a nice level. Maybe I'll use fill view here. And I'm gonna grab the paintbrush tool now what I'm going to start by doing is double clicking the word effect to make sure that we don't have any extra leftover adjustments in there. And by the way, if you're looking on more basics of how to use the local adjustment brush or the paintbrush tool, check out my video here. I made a video a few months ago, almost a year ago on how to use this tool. So if you're not familiar with it, check that out because this is really just going to touch on the very advanced range masking function of this specific tool. Actually, of all the local adjustment tools in Lightroom. So I'm going to grab this and I'm going to get a nice big paintbrush. So let me uh, increase my brush size here, make it a little bit larger. And then I'm going to turn on my overlay with the letter O and I'm going to start painting. Now what I want to do here is just get a really rough selection of the hat. And you can see anywhere that turns red is being selected. Now we can see I'm spilling over onto Sarah's skin a lot. I'm spilling over onto a lot of different parts of the photograph. What I want though is just the hat. Now this is where a range mask comes in. Today I want to talk about the color range mask because it's very interesting the way that it works and it helps us select one color away from another color. In this case, the blue and the green of the background are very nice contrasting colors. So if we can tell Lightroom that within this selection, within this painted region that I just signified as important, if we can tell Lightroom to only pay attention to the blues in that area, we will be left with a super nice selection of just that hat. So what I'm gonna do, now that I have my rough selection, is down here at the bottom of the paintbrush tool, there's a thing called range mask, and I'm gonna choose color. Now again, color is when there's a difference in color between what you want and what you don't want. That's why I'm using it here. I want the blue hat selected, I don't want the green background. Those are two very different colors, so Lightroom shouldn't have any issue telling the two of them apart. So I'm gonna do that now off the bat, nothing changes, that's okay. We're gonna grab this little uh, eyedropper tool down here under range masking, and then what it wants us to do is make a selection with the eyedropper of the colors or color that we are interested in selecting. So in this case, the hat. And what you can do, you can click individual points or you can click and drag and select a sample, which is what I'm gonna do here. So I'm gonna click and drag. You can see I'm drawing out a little triangle or a little box. That's definitely not a triangle. That's a rectangle. I learned my shapes. We'll make a rectangle, we'll let go. And you can see as soon as I do that, boom, it just made the selection a heck of a lot better, right? It got rid of all that green over there. Now, we also have a little amount slider. We can drag this, and this kind of chooses how far on either side of the colors we've selected. How many other colors is it acceptable? Is acceptable for it to also select? You can also use the eyedropper to sample more colors. If you had like, you know, maybe red and blue flowers against a green background, you could use this tool to select the red and the blue. You could just use that eyedropper tool to go boop, 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 and sample more than one color. In this case, I just want the blue, and I've taken my sample, so I'm gonna click and drag the amount slider here, and I think right about 40, 45, we're to a point where just the hat is being selected, maybe even a little bit lower, because her skin starts to get selected. Maybe like 29 here, all right? Now, hard to see what's going on because I still have my overlay on, so I'm gonna turn off the overlay with the letter O. Now we can see the hat again, and then check this out. Now when I use my exposure control, only the hat is changing. 
And you can see there's very little artifacting, there's very little haloing, because that selection is so perfectly around just the things that are blue. So in this example, I actually, what I wanted to do was darken the hat a little bit and desaturate it a little bit, kind of pull the viewer's eye away from that hat and more towards Sarah. Now, if you were shooting this ad, this as a photo for Patagonia and you wanted it to be an advertisement for them, you might saturate and brighten the hat a little bit to draw the viewer's eye. The point being, we can very, very specifically and precisely target one area versus another that we want to change. So here I've desaturated, I've darkened a little bit. I'm gonna close this tool and then I'm gonna hit the Y key. We can see our before after. And you can see on the left, that hat is very obvious. It attracts the viewer's eye. And on the right, it's toned down and it's much more muted. So a range mask gives you the ability to take a selection, kind of a, uh, you could think of a rough draft of your selection and really hone in on what you actually want. You wanna start by just making a rough selection and then go in there and use range mask, in this case, the color range mask, to specifically target the area that you want to adjust. Super simple, super straightforward. And again, that's only available with the new Lightroom Classic version that came out a couple months ago, all right? Now, should also be said, the range masking option is in all three of the local adjustments, whether it's the radial gradient, the graduated filter, or the local adjustment brush. So it works the same in all of those tools. All right. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. You disliked it, hit the dislike button. If you have a question or a comment or a video idea or anything like that, leave that down in the comment section down below. And lastly, if you really like the videos that we're putting out, check out our channel and hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with our future videos. Thanks for watching.